determine ethical and unethical behavior. Leah? Now, um, if I ask you, is it something to do with money? Rich people are more ethical? No, not necessary. Is it poor people are more ethical? No, not necessary. So, so we say that, how about those people who are well-educated? Well, we, we, we saw it on the news, right? Some of the so-called well-educated people, senior people, they still can commit unethical behavior. And also, something that's very strange is that sometimes some people are very ethical, but sometimes they are not. Now, so here we would like to find out exactly what are the factors that are affecting it, all right? So we're saying that startup work, looking at the ethical dilemma. Dilemma means that, you know, uh, what are the possibility? We start up with one thing is called stage of moral development. So stage means that, that how people are developed into moral on, you know, or unmoral behavior. Um, the reason is because none of us are born with this kind of DNA. So it is really depends on that, how we grow up with. Now, so you say, how we grow up with affected by what? Is it from school or parents? Uh -huh. Here are some of the um, development. Now, let's understand first, so we'll be able to see if we can you know, apply it into the real life. So you don't have to memorize the definition, but you understand what they are, all right? The stage, first stage is called pre-convention level. Now, pre-convention level means a person's choice between right or wrong is based on personal consequence. So the key word here is consequence. So what's that mean? So that means that people, whether they want to be good or bad, it really depends on the result. Consequence means the result. So if the result is bad, people say, hmm, I won't do that. But if the res there's no result, then people will say that, so why not, right? Now, a good example that why people do not, let's say that, do not like to break the rule or break the law is because if you break the law, you may be going to the jail, right? So if you choose to do the wrong thing and your personal consequence is going to jail, so sometimes you don't want to break the rule because you don't want to go to the jail. Not that because you don't think you, you should break the rule. You're just saying that I dare not to do it is because, you know, I have a consequence that is going to jail. So this is not really in a, you know, any moral stage, right? It's just because we are worried about the punishment. So we stop doing it. Now, of course, um, this is difficult to manage because uh, sometimes you may not be able to tell if someone is, make the mistake, right? The only is that you catch them, then you know you know that they make mistake. Now, so this is called pre-conventional level. The next one is called conventional level. Now, conventional level means that ethical decision is relied on living up to the expectation of others. Others. So whether you should do it or not is not because you think it is right or wrong, but just worry about how people will see you. Now, I remember um, some years ago, um, I did a research in looking at why Hong Kong people like to buy, you know, like copy goods and fake goods, right? Uh, like computers, uh, software, handbag, clothing, you know, why the Hong Kong is famous in the world that people like to buy, you know, this kind of copy goods. So th that was my research objective. So we have a team of you know, assistants. Um, first, we went to um, the computer center in uh, Sam Sui Po. We stand outside and watch people coming in and out. And then we go and, you know, randomly ask the people saying that, um, is, uh, will you buy fake goods? Many of them are very honest. They say, um, yes, I will. Um, you say, why? Because she's saying that, you know, what's wrong about it? You know, so loud. They are cheaper, right? It's just like, will you, you know, copy your textbook? 
what do you say? Mm, why not? You know, um, I don't have to pay money, right? Everybody doing it, you know. So in that case, means that you do something wrong, and you don't you don't worry about it because everyone are doing it. Okay. So um, in the interview that time when we were with the uh, no, customer outside um, the computer centers, the interesting part that you know some of the interviewer you know tell me was that they saying that um, I will not buy fake goods or copied goods if I'm going with my friends because my friend will know that you know I buy copied goods. So if I want to buy those fake goods or copied goods, I will go and do that alone so nobody knows. It. Now, so what does that mean? That means that it's not that they are thinking buying fake goods is not ethical or not moral well, but just because I don't want any other people to see it. Now, so that is called conventional. This time it's not just the result, but because of others. Now, principle levels. It means that individual define moral values apart from the authority. That means it's not because of the consequence or the punishment of the group or the general society in general or the group or society in general. And also not because of the others. Others means that the groups or the societies. So principle means that I don't do it. I don't think it is ethical. It's not because I'm worried about the law. I'm not worried about punishment. And I don't care how other people say it. But I just think that this is not right. I won't do it. Now, that is called principled levels. Um, I'm sure that in the societies, you do see that a lot of people, you know, will let you know the reason why they do it and why they don't do it. Some people will say that I don't want to do it is just because I'm get, I'm worried to get caught. Some will say that oh I don't want to do it because um, uh, other people see it then it's not right you know if nobody see it I would dare to do it. And principle means that under any circumstances whether I'll get punished or not or whether people see me or not well I just don't you know do it. So here are the three levels. Now you know that um, some of the um, uh, societies, most of the people are still, you know, just keep in the first stage pre-conventional level. Yes, a lot of human being, you know, are still in this level. Not because they think it's right or wrong; it's just because they are worried about the punishment. And um, some societies, they are moving to a better level that is conventional, at least, you know, they were saying that, well, um, if other people don't want me to litter, you know, throw garbage on the ground, I shouldn't. But some people, you know, will get to the third stage is that I just don't want to make the ground dirty. I don't want to throw, you know, I don't want to litter on the ground whether people see me or not. Okay, now, so here, they're giving you a little bit more you know, detail about the stage of moral development. So the pre-conventional means that they will follow the rule because they are worried that if they don't do it, they will get caught. Not that because they think it is the right things to do. Now, conventional means that sometimes they have to fulfill the obligation to which they have agreed. That means that they are concerned about, you know, that other people um, uh, want them to do or, you know, live up to the expectation by the people who are close to them. So basically, three to four means what? You know, they worry people seeing it. Now, principle means that the value rights of others and uphold absolutely values and rights regardless of the majority's opinion. So if everybody thinks it's wrong, but I still think that this is the right things to do, so we say that this is my principle and I will do it. And, you know, the other is self-chosen ethical principle, even they violate the law. So sometimes we say that, well, I don't think the law is right because I think it is, you know, um, unethical or, you know, we should not discriminate, you know, the, the poor, the little, the kid, you know, or the older people, you know. So sometimes the law may not say it, but you're saying that, well, even the law didn't say I'm not violating it, but I don't want to do it. I choose to be, you know, believe in what is right. 
Okay, now, so here are the stages of development. So probably I would say it should not be too difficult to understand, right? Okay, now after that, we'll move on to another one. Now, not everyone in the stage of moral development um, will be, you know, have a certain kind of behavior, you know, ethical or unethical behavior. Sometimes it's more moderate, means that these four factors will affect you too. Not only the stage, but these four factors will affect that how you're going to select ethical or unethical behavior. So, what are these four factors? Now, first one, let's look at is called individual characteristic. Now, individual characteristic can base on someone's values. Now, value means that based on the convictions about what is right and wrong. Now, value usually are being developed in the younger age. So when they are young and they may see a certain thing and that may affect the future that how they see it. Now, so let me use one um, um, example. Now, this are all actually is from psychologists. Um, there was a research is looking at, you know, um, select 50 very successful people and ask them a lot of things about their values. So it turned out to be that around um, 30 out of these 50 successful people said they do not like their father. So the thing is quite funny, you know, saying that, well, you are so successful, you did so well, but why you do not like your father? And it turned out to be, they all say it's more or less the same thing, you say, I grew up in a broken family. My father did not take care of my family. So when I grow up, I keep telling myself, I hate my father and I don't want to be like him when I grow up. So that instead of, you know, learning from the father's bad habit, this group of, you know, people, they work so hard and try to be more successful because they want to avoid being as bad as their father. Now, so values sometimes can mean that it, by the, on the way you're growing up, there are some of the things that convince you that you should do or you shouldn't do. Now, of course, some others may think that, oh, I am quite successful is because I got influenced by my father. Why? You say, my father is a very successful, hardworking uh, father, so I want to grow up just like him. So they work hard and be, you know, after they grow up, they're more successful. So when you actually be saying that it is something that we grow up with, not necessarily is always positive or negative, but something that will convince us that we should do it, that that is going to be the values. Ego strength. Now, ego strength means that a personality measure of a strength of person's convictions. Now, conviction here means that, you know, convince that this is what you want to do. Now, ego means that, you know, your personality, how strong it is. You can have a weak ego or a strong ego. Now, let's just see, use an example. What is a strong ego? Strong ego means that if you determine in doing something, you are very sure that you're going to do it. So in other words, if, if now whether you're right or wrong, if someone wants to change your mind, it is very difficult because you really deeply believe what you think it is right or wrong. Now, but some people, well, not everyone is like that. Some people have a very, what we call the weak ego. Weak ego means that, mm, well, if someone's saying that you should change, then they will say, oh, okay. So weak egos persons is very easy to be influenced by the others. And if people tell them to go to the right way, they will go to the right way. But if people tell them to go to the wrong way, they probably will go to the wrong way too because they really don't have that much, you know, um, I'm saying that strong belief on their own choice.
toys. The third one is called locus of control. Now, locus of control is a term. And if you study psychology, you will, you know, be um, seeing this term. It is a formal, you know, it is a, um, a term. It is have to be three words together, locus of control. Now, locus of control means a personality attribute that measures the degree to which people believe they control their own fate or not. Um, the meaning, uh, locus of control has two kinds. One is called internal locus of control. One is called external locus of control. So um, most of us, you know, will have a certain kind of preference. Some people are more internal locus of control and some are external. Um, before I'm going to explain that, let me ask you um, one thing. All right, you can type it and I can see it on the screen. Um, do you believe in fortune teller? Or something like feng shui? Do you believe in it? Are you sure? Do you believe in bad luck? You know, like something is set for your life. Do you believe in that? Mm -hmm. Ah, I would assume that you know they always say that Chinese people believe in feng shui and all those things, and you know fortune tellers, those things, and whether you are good luck, you know, and also your what? Um, uh, uh, there's a lot of things, you know, that you can check if you are lucky or not. Now, so look at some of you say yes, some of you say no. Okay, now, if you say no, I don't believe in this so-called uh, feng shui, uh, fortune telling, you know, and lucky, you know, lucky, uh, lucky or unlucky. You say that. If I do it well, then I think that I have a better chance to success, you know. So you don't believe that, you know, feng shui those, then I will consider you as a internal locus of control type of personality. All right. Now, if you say, yeah, why not? You know, sometimes, you know, feng shui all this is very important because that may affect how lucky I am or how easy I'll get success. Then I will call you that you have an external locus of control kind of personalities. Now, according to the individual characteristic under ethical behavior, we believe that if you are an internal locus of control personalities, then it will be easier for you to be more ethical. The reason is, Internal locus of control means that you believe everything or most of the things are under your own control. Now, if you think the things are under your own control, you will be more willing to work hard to achieve it. Because you think that if I work hard, I, will, I may get it. If I don't work hard, definitely I won't have it. The sky will not fall off and give it to me. That is your belief. Then you probably will be more willing to work hard. Now, but if you are external locus of control, so you will have the feeling that um, if you fail, you probably is because you are having some kind of bad luck. Now, if you fail is because of bad luck or because of other people controlling you, you will not trying to control or work hard for it. Yeah, it is. Now, um, I think that many in the last class, I already told you that um, I'm an old lady. I've been working for many years, over 30, 40 years. And um, when I was working in organizations, um, I can w w tell you, if I work with someone for three to four months, I'm, I dare to say, I can pretty much predict if this worker is going 
going to be more successful in the future or not. Now, how come I dare to make this promise? Um, I guess it's because uh, all the, you know, psychology classes and the management classes and, the, you know, years of experience that I find that I'm quite accurate. Now, not that because I just predict, but I can explain to you the reason. Um, when I was working in an office, there are a lot of, you know, young graduate. Um, you can tell that they have the different personalities. Now, let's say, um, if someone gave me the document and I find that there are some mistake or there are some something goes wrong, of course I would talk to the, you know, talk to this uh, person and say that something wrong. Now, they usually will have two kinds of reaction. Some of the worker, when I say that there is something wrong, they will look at it and they say, oh yes, I'm sorry, I make a mistake. So they are, you know, agree on that they make the mistake. And um, all they're thinking of is, oh, I should change it. Then I think that this group of workers, you know, in the near future, he will improve. Why? Because every time when there is a mistake, he believes that it is his fault. Whether it's someone else's fault, you know, he will still think in that I should be more careful. So that means that every time when he's doing things, he will try to improve it. Because I'm thinking like, if it is my mistake, uh, I admit it, and uh, I want to change it, I want to improve it, right? So, you know, people will improve if they admit the mistake. That is called internal locus of control kind of personalities. But I do see that a lot of workers, if you tell them that, oh, here's some mistake, they usually will immediately tell me, oh, it's not my mistake. Who and who gave me the wrong information? Oh, I am sorry, you know, just because um, I don't have the computer to do it, so I make the mistake. In other words, is this kind of person always come up with an excuse that it is not his mistake, but someone else's mistake. Um, yes, we agree that this always happened, right? But this kind of personality it is not going to help them. The reason is because that if they think it is other people's mistake, then they don't need to improve it, right? It's someone else's problem, you know. It's not my problem, so I don't have anything to improve. Yeah, it is. So be careful with this one, you know. And since it's, it's, it's talking about the topic, that's why that I would like to share this experience with you because quite a, I can see that quite a bit of per, um, um, uh, people, you know, when they have this kind of external locus or control type of personalities, they never think that it is their mistake. So they never try to improve it because they think that whose mistake, the family's mistake, the society's mistake, never his mistake, so he doesn't need to improve. All right, now, so one thing is the individuals. What are the things that he believes is right or wrong? And how strong his belief? And also include that whether he thinks he can control it. So if someone thinking that he is his value, he's very agree on what his value, that means he is very strongly believe that it is his right, then he is going to think that he can control it. Then this kind of person actually will be a little bit more ethical. The reason is because they uphold to what they believe it is correct. Now, so this is individual characteristic. Now, individual characteristic is not the only thing that affect ethical behavior, right? Next thing is the organization culture. Now, um, we will have a, uh, a chapter later on talk about what is organizational culture. Now, you know what is culture, right? Culture is talking about the whole countries, right? Organization means that each, you know, organizations will have a little bit different way of people operating there. Now, um, next week we're going to have a face to face class. Then you are going to come back to Hang Seng Yu, right? You will find that when you are studying in Hang Seng Yu, we will be a little different from when you were studying in your prime, uh, your secondary school. 
So if I ask you, what is the difference? You probably will say, hmm, when I was in primary school or secondary school, um, we have a fixed classroom, but when you come to university, you don't have a fixed classroom. You have to run from classroom to classroom, right? Now, so this is a kind of culture, right? But it is easy for you to identify because it's physical. But you will also find that your the teachers behave a little differently. Um, the schools, you know, classmates, they behave a little differently. But you don't know how to explain it, but you just say, hmm, it's very different, right? Now, that is what we call organizations culture. Every organizations will have their own culture. That means people behave a little differently. The reason is they influence each other. So organization culture consists of what? Share organizational value. So if you work in a department or in a company, everybody is, you know, working late. You probably will start working late too. Why? Because everybody are working late, so you don't feel like to walk out of the office, you know, too early. So that is, you know, as times go by, you share the organizational value. You share that, you know, everybody prefer to work late, right? Now, this value reflects what the organization stands for and what it believes in, as well as creating an environment that influences employee behavior ethical or unethically. So in other words, if you work in an organization, everybody are cheating. Then you believe that that's the way it is, what's wrong about it. So you will continue cheating because you know everybody doing the same. But you know, if nobody cheat and everybody is uh, doing, you know, let's say, come to work on time, then you will feel that hey, this is the way it is. So, oh, um, we better do the same thing. Now that is called organizations culture. So there is a term called value based management. It means that the organizations value guide employee in the way they do their job. Now this actually is going back to talk about is the top level managers conceptual skills right if the top level manager think what is right for the company and they will guide this kind of value will guide the employee in the way that they do their job well so um let's say if the company that uh, respect the elderly or respect the seniorities then you know, everyone will do the same. The reason is because they see that, oh, the boss do the same thing, I can do the same thing too. Now, what happens if the boss are cheating, have some, you know, bribery, and the worker will find that, oh, the boss doing the same thing, I can do that too. Now, so that is called the organization's uh, culture. All right, besides the culture, there are some of the things within the organization also affect the organization's ethical behavior. First is the design of the organizations affecting ethical behavior. The design of it means that, you know, is that how the organizations, those kind of um, setting up will affect the ethical behavior. Second is ambiguity and uncertainty more likely to encourage unethical behavior. Because if the company do not have a very strict rule of that what you can do or what you cannot do, so workers are not sure they should do it or not, and it's possible that they make a mistake and commit some unethical behavior. Now, let me ask you this question, all right? Be prepared to answer me. Um, let's assume you are a very good salesman and uh, at the end of the year um, you have a client or customers who gave you a car as a gift so you know that you know quite often at the year end you know uh, some of the customers will give the workers some licensee or giving them some gift. Now, my question is, 
What happens if there is a customer at the end of the year because he make a lot of money and he will want to give you some reward and give you a car as a reward? Should you accept the car as a gift? Should you? Or can you? Is it ethical to accept the car? Anyone? Let's see. Anyone? students that they're going to graduate, I usually would like to hire, you know, in ICAC to give my student a talk on what are ethical and unethical behavior. Because sometimes I know that, you know, as a student, you probably do not know much about this so-called ethical and unethical behavior. And while you're working, you may make some mistake. So I always like to prepare my student before they graduate. So I invite the ICAC to give a talk telling the student what they can do and what they cannot do, you know, in the business uh, environment. Now, so coming back to my question, if your client give you a car as a gift, should you take it? The answer is, it depends. If, you know, the customer give you a car and you will inform your boss saying that, the customer give me a car, can I take it? If your boss say yes, you can take it. Basically, the law say, if you inform the, your boss, inform the top management, or you know, and inform your supervisor, anyone who is higher than you, and if they know it, then you can accept it. Because by law, that if the boss don't know you accept such a expensive gift, then it is vibrary. But if they don't know it, then it is not vibrary, okay? So if you secretly took the car, then it is vibrary. But you go and inform your boss that, oh, a client gave me a car. The boss know it, then you can accept it, okay? okay? All right, now, next question. Um, your customer invites you to go out for a very, very fancy dinner. You know, those kind of few thousand dollars dinner that you have fish, apparently, you know, and a shark fin, you know. Uh, should you go? Do you need to ask your boss? Should you go? You know it's going to be a very expensive dinner. Can you go? This time is not a gift for dinner. Don't go? Mm. You just say you don't want to go, right? Yes. If AA, no, uh, I don't want to pay for it. <laughs> if expensive dinner and it's not from me, I don't want to pay for it. So all of you say yes. Ask the boss. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Any other suggestions? I think a few of you are listening to my lesson, right? That's why you always respond. I will look at your names. Anyone else? You go? Yes. No. No, yes, how can you? So many years and no, all, all them together. Okay. Good. Yeah, you know, respond to me sometimes, you know, otherwise it's very boring for you to, you know, just looking at the PowerPoint. 
I'm so looking forward for next week so we can have a face-to-face -face class. All right, now, the answer is yes, you can go and you don't have to ask your boss because, um, you know, according to the ICAC, if clients invite you to go out to eat for dinner or even to go out to drink, you don't need to ask your boss approval. Yes, you can. It is not a bribery. Now, but let me ask you one more question before we move on. What happens after the dinner? You know, there's so much food to eat, so you cannot finish it. And you say, oh, we shouldn't waste the food. Uh, should we pack it home and take it home? We call it, can we use doggy bag and take it home? Would that be okay? You know, I have a lot of leftover food, so I think uh, not to waste it. So we pack it all together and so I can take it home. Would that be corruption? Oh. Can I do it? Is it legal? Illegal. No means what? Take the leftover food is illegal. You won't do it because you think it's illegal. Take the food away, right? Cannot do it? Ask the customers. Yeah, let's say that you are the customers, you know. Um, and, um, no, oh, the customer take you out. Yeah, right. Take it. Someone say, take it. Yeah, it's leftover food, right? Just take it home. We don't want to waste it. You can. Subsidy cannot. See, so many of you have a different answer. And some of you may fall into this problem, right? Because you are not sure if it is um, okay or not. It's ethical or unethical. So sometimes you did it by mistake, right? So if the rule is not clear and you, or you don't understand, it is easy for you to make unethical behavior. Now, um, the answer is no, you cannot take the leftover food home. Then you say, wait a minute, the dinner is so expensive and I can eat it there, but I cannot take away anything? Correct. According to the, the ICAC said, if you take the things away, that is considered as corruption because they are worried that, you know, they cannot give it to you, you know, so they will put it on the dinner table. Like they say that, oh, a, bar, uh, um, a dozen of alcohol, uh, a dozen of XO on the table. They know that you cannot finish it. So an excuse is, uh, you can take it home. So um, according to ICAC, taking the leftover food home, it is not acceptable. But you know, if you eat over there at the table, then you can eat as much as you want, and it is not illegal. Because I think that the Chinese practice is that taking people out for dinner, you know, it is a local culture, so that is not illegal. All right. Now, so you know, in real life, you're going to have many situations is you know similar like this. You know, and you know, ambiguity means that not clear or sometimes it's uncertainty. So if company's rules is not clear and uncertain, then you know you may have committed to some unethical behavior. Now, as an example in the organization is, if you are an advertising company and uh, you have a client come in and ask you, can you help me to do advertising? You say, sure, we are advertising company, right? So um, what do you want me to promote for you? and the client say cigarette. So is it ethical for you to promote cigarette for him? 
you probably saying that we should not encourage people to smoke cigarette, right? And now I'm going to encourage or trying to do promotion for him, you know, to um, sell more cigarette. You know, is it ethical or unethical? This one will be really depends on your company. Now, if your company have rules saying that you do not allow workers to um, promote a certain kind of product, then it's very clear. You say, sorry, company not allowed. But if the company does not have this rule, then you can because it is a business, right? Now, so it is really depends on the company. This is what we mean, the structure. Structure means the design of the organization, how clear their you know, um, environment and what they could consider as unethical. Of course, you know, do they have the rules and regulations? And one more is the behavior of the superior. If the superior also commit crime or corruptions, then the workers more or less will follow because they're thinking of, you know, my boss do the same thing. So it is the acceptable behavior. All right, now let's move on. Next one is called issue intensity. Now, issue intensity means that how important it is to the society, to what people think. So um, there is no guideline, right? No degree of what is acceptable principles and values on all this, right? But there is one guideline on whether it's ethical behavior is looking at how intensity, how is how intense, that means how serious or how important these ethical issues to the individual. So in the in other words is that um, I commit an unethical behavior, so this person um, gets sick. Okay, that is not serious, but. I commit an unethical behavior and this person die, and it is very serious. So the um, degree is really depends on the individual, how important to them. Now, so here are some of the six items that we consider as issue intensities. So the objective, the, the, the key here is how serious it will affect the consequence, the result to them individuals. So let me go through what they are. Now, again, um, it is difficult to memorize all this because this definition. Maybe you can think of an example. Then it will be easier for you to understand, OK? The first one is called consensus of wrong. Now, how much agreement is there that this action is wrong? So if some of the things, there's no such thing as right or wrong, right? But if more people think it is wrong, then it is considered as wrong, right? Now, an example I can think of it, abortion, Do toy. Um, actually, there is no, you know, agreement that is this a acceptable practice or not. Now, but in the societies, if most people think abortion is a freedom of choice for the female, then they think that it is ethical. Now, but in some of the um, culture, they think that killing a life is unethical. Well, if that is what they believe, then it is an, an unethical. So it will be depends on the environment, the societies, how much they agree on it or not. If they are more agree on it, then it is um, considered as, you know, that the right uh, um, if they are agree on it, then you know that it is not good practice. Then it is a, not is a bad practice. If most of the people agree that no problem, then it is not wrong. The other one is probability of harm. That means the chance of harming people. Now, um, a good example I think of is nowadays, a lot of things we do will have a consequence, what they call, that affect the weather, affect the global warming. So even I turn on the air conditioning, you know, they say that it will affect the global warming. Now, so when you turn on the air conditioning, 
you probably will think, hmm, the likely that I turn on the my air condition will affect the global warming. It is very small, right? It's just one air condition. There are millions of air condition in the world. In the world. So if you think that your action that will cause the harm is very small, then you will assume that it is okay, acceptable behavior or ethical behavior. But if you're thinking that the probability of harming others is very high, like for example, you are in a restaurant, you are the cook, you know the meat is not good, and you still serve the meat to your customer, the chance that you will get food poison is very, very high. Then you will think that, oh, that is unethical, right? So that is talking about the chance that you will harm someone. The higher the chance you think it is, the more you think it is unethical. Immediacy of consequence. So immediacy means that will the harm be feel right away? So let's go back to do the same example. If my food is bad and I'm going to serve it, the customer immediately will have food poison. Then you say, ah, that's not right. But what happens if you're going to put some kind of ingredients to do the cooking? which will make the food very tasty, but in long run will cause cancer in the human bodies. Then you do not see the immediacy of consequence, right? You're saying that, well, maybe in the future may not be affected by me. Then will, you will be less considered as, you know, or a important issue in the ethical behavior. So this is quite clear, right? Immediate you get, poison and go to a hospital then you think that oh that is unethical that you know the cook is very bad but if the cook put a little bit of ingredients in it that it will be you know in long run will cause uh, cancer you probably think that oh well you know it's in the long run and may not be really that bad then you think that it is acceptable next one is proximacy to victim Proximity to a victim means that how close are the potential victims? If it is close to the potential victim, then you consider that it is unethical behavior. But if it's far away, then you say it's okay, right? Now, um, an example is, uh, how about building, uh, how about um, we consider as like, uh, Flooding. Now, if you are going to build something that to stop the flood, um, if you think that oh, this you know, oh, like um, this bar to stop the flood um, is far out in the countryside. No, even if it got flooded, no, there's not too many people being affected. So you use less, you know, a lower quality of you know products. Then you think oh, it's okay because you know not too many people will harm the village is far away. But if the you know bar that you are stopping the flight the flood coming in is very close to the village, and you didn't do a good job, then people think you are very unethical because the damage is very easy to happen. The reason is because it is very close to the village and lot of people are there. So this one is really talking about the location of the problem. The other one is called concentration of effect. Concentration may mean that, you know, that um, how serious that affecting a small group of people. So the only example I can think of is many years ago that um, they find that the milk powder in China will cause some kind of disease to the babies. So almost the whole world knows it. I think that it's during the first time that China have some kind of milk powder will cause the baby have a big head. And they will say that those companies are very unethical because they create this kind of lousy milk powder and affect the babies. So if you're concentrated on a certain kind of people, then um, they will assume that you know, the effect of the action on the victim is very serious. 
Now, the last one is called greatness of harm. Greatness of harm means that how many people will be affected. Um, a good example is building. Because if your building is not do it right, you know, the whole building collapse, a lot of people will die. So that is very serious. They would consider, you know, if you do not have a secure building, and that is very, very unethical. Now, but what about if one car, if that particular car have a little bit engine problem, someone got killed, then we will say that, oh, it's not really that unethical because maybe it is just, you know, um, accidents or just a little bit mistake, unfortunately, right? Now, okay, so exactly what is this issue intensity means? That means that if the result is serious, a lot of people get harmed, um, most people think that it's wrong, the chance get harm is very high, and the result is immediately close to the victim. Now, this is called intensity. So if it's very intense around this area, we will consider that it is unethical. Right now, so let's go back and look at some of the context. Now, so far we've been looking at it. Um, we also talk about the culture and location, right? So ethical standard actually is not universal. So what is ethical and unethical really depends on the social and cultural difference. Now, let me ask you one more question before we can, you know, uh, take a break. Um, Chinese like to give out licensee in the Chinese New Year. Okay. So, is it okay to give out licensee in the Chinese New Year? We are talking about there is some money, right? Now, because um, according to the Chinese, we're saying that giving out licensee means giving out some good fortune for the others. So, it is acceptable. But some others saying that not acceptable. The reason is because that um, if somebody got the licensee, they will give a better service, right? If you don't give them licensee, they will give you a lousy service. So they're saying that that is not ethical. So now I would like to ask you, what is your opinion about Chinese giving out licensee in the Chinese New Year? Oh, what is your opinion? Is it ethical or unethical? Because this has been argued in Hong Kong society for a long time. Because a lot of people say that if you don't give them IC, they will give you lousy service. So what is it called? Bribery, right? So what do you think? Can you give me some idea? Already. Is it ethical? Okay. What about the others? Yeah, well, you can actually talk to me on the microphone too if you think that it is difficult to write. You think it's ethical. But what happened to those people who don't get licensee and give you lousy service? Because I experienced those, you know, in a restaurant, if you give the licensee, you also get a table. You think it's okay, huh, in Hong Kong to get it? Because you get licensee too from your parents. That is different. But what about in the public service? Because right I, as I know that some of the organizations, they will tell the workers they are not allowed to receive licensee because they are worried that they will have, you know, corruption or, you know, different kind of service. So you all think it's luck. So you all think it's okay, huh? You like it if you know um, if you don't give licensee, they give you lousy service because you know you don't give licensee. Well, honestly, right now they still don't know. You know, it's hard to argue 
because giving out license with money in many countries it is corruption. Um, the only place nowadays is still will happen is Chinese because they think it is Chinese culture. So we have to be very careful with it. You know, if you go overseas, um, be careful with that because not all culture uh, allow you to give out license because it's talking about money involved. If you go to America, you know, um, they have to declare how much money they got and then, you know, they have to pay tax and all those things. So it is, you know, quite um, sensitive issues. All right, now, let me ask you one more question in the ethical standards. Huh? Um, now, I don't know whether you know it because a lot of foreigners, if they want to apply a visa to go to China, they can apply through the, of course, the agents, right? The agents will tell you, if you give me more money, I can do the, you know, get you the visa faster. So is that ethical? In other words, is, if you give more money, I will do it faster for you. So actually, you know, um, some years ago, now I don't need to have a visa to go back, the is that they have a price. They say, if you want to immediately, you have to pay $500. But if you are going to get your visa in one week, you don't need to rush, then you don't need to pay extra money. Is that ethical? In other words, can I pay more so I can cut line and faster? Do you think it's not ethical? No. Policy. Uh -huh. <laughs> More money means higher quality of service. Any others? Who's oh. medical? Actually, the basic, oh, okay, oh, you say ethical. But actually, I will agree with this student. If you charge people more and you give people a better quality of service, then it is not unethical. It is okay. The reason is because, you know, like, um, I want you to do things faster, you know, but then I tell you to work overtime. But I pay you, right? So you are using extra effort to buy faster time. So I will consider that is ethical. Now, if you charge people more money, but to serve other people slower, then it's unethical because you're already cutting line, right? But if you're charging people more money, so you work faster for them, but does not affect other people's then we will agree that it is ethical behavior. All right. Okay. Um, one more thing you have to be aware of is there is a Foreign Corruption Practice Act. Now this is, now this one for the culture is really depends on different countries, right? But there is a Foreign Corrupted Practice Act. That means whole world have to follow. It is illegal to corrupt a foreign officer like giving him some token payment. In, uh, in other words, is that some excuse the payment to the office, uh, uh, to, our, to our officials, and um, for particular to get some permission to do something. Now that is corruption. So anywhere in the world, if you are going to as a foreign officer, and uh, you give them extra money, so you can get by any kind of policy or practice. That is everywhere in the world. But, you know, for giving out license, giving people more service, sometimes this may not be true in all countries. So um, it is really depends on the sh where the cultures are and which country you are talking about. All right. Now, so how about we take a 15 minutes break and then we'll be working on another uh, topic.
topic that is now we understand why people behave ethical and unethical, you know, what caused them. So 